There are so many treatments for dry eyes. Which one's the right one for you? If you're interested in finding out, keep watching. Aloha everyone, I am Dr. Rupa Wong, ophthalmologist, and on this channel we talk a little bit about eye surgery, eye health, pediatric ophthalmology, since that's my special area of expertise along with misaligned eyes, but we also talk about my first love, eye beauty. But today we're talking about dry eyes, and the reason for that is because it does predominantly affect women more than men, and especially women that wear makeup. So if you wanted to finally figure out what are all these dry eye treatments, what do they mean? How do they work? And which one's the right one for you? That's what we're going to be diving deep. So there are a couple things that you can actually do that will make your dry eyes better. If you're on a device a lot, like most of us are right now, your blink rate decreases. And if you don't blink as much, then your eyes tend to get drier. So make sure to take breaks when you are doing a lot of prolonged up close work, whether reading on your device or on your computer take breaks 20 20 20 rule every 20 minute 20 second break where you look at something 20 feet away so that's an easy thing to help with your dry eyes i don't know if it's a treatment but it's a, a tip let's say all right so then let's dive into the actual treatments first are teardrops what's the difference between all of them so you've got a couple different kinds there's things like this sustain which we love as well as refresh What's the difference between the ones that come in the big bottle versus these that come in the little bottle? So if they come in a big bottle like this, and I'll open this up. Again, totally should have done this off camera. Okay, bottles like this have preservatives in them, which mean you should really only use an artificial tear like this four times a day. This is not Visine. Whole different thing than Visine. We're talking about Sustain, Genteel, Blink. You can even get the generic version at your CVS. Um, that's what we're talking about here with the artificial tears. Now, most of these artificial tear companies also come out with a preservative free version. A preservative free version is going to look like this. So they have these single use vials that you pop the top off, you put one drop in each eye, and then you throw it away. That's because it doesn't have preservatives. It can't stick around for a long time just hanging out on your vanity. So you want to throw those away. The benefit of a preservative free drop is the fact that you can use it more frequently. You can use it 6, 8, 10, 12 times a day if you need because we worry a lot about preservatives. Preservatives can actually cause a little bit of toxicity and worsen some inflammation on the cornea causing keratitis. So we don't want to do that. So if you need to use an artificial tear more than four times a day, always go towards a preservative free artificial teardrop. All right, so that's the tears. Second is hot compresses. What hot compresses do is they open up the meibomian glands, which make the oil for your tears. So your tears don't evaporate so quickly. So when you do a hot compress on your eye, you're softening up that oil so that it's not thick and paste-like, but it's more liquidy like olive oil. That's what we want. So you can do it with just a washcloth and hot water. If you want, you can buy something like this, which is available on Amazon as well as in most eye doctors. It's a little eye mask. You toss it in the microwave, heat it up, put it on your eyes. Oh, don't I look fab? There you go. The poor man's version, which is honestly what I do, is a rice sock where you take a clean sock, you put a cup of uncooked rice in it, and you throw that in the microwave for 30 seconds. That kind of is the same as this. These, these are great because they kind of have those little beads in them. So this you can actually, I think you might even be able to use this for cold. Um, so if you have little bags under your eye like I do, you can use that as well. But the rice sock works equally as well. Third treatment, which is also generic available to you, is omega-3 vitamins. Now there's a lot of different kinds of omega-3s. Right now here I've got something that we uh, sell in our office, which is focus vitamins. Um, you can use that. Not all omega-3s are the same. They are not all bioavailable in the same level. So you want to find the one that's right for you. Some of my patients complain of a you know, fishy smell, aftertaste with certain brands. So this is a brand that I like. It's why I have it in my office. I'll link to some others down below as well. But omega-3s are helpful. So how does the omega-3s help? Basically, they help with that same area, those meibomian glands that the hot compresses are getting at. The omega-3s are also going to just help regulate that oily layer so it's not too blocked up, it's nice 
and a nice clear and liquidy consistency so that it can pump the oil into your tear film so that your tears are just nice and fully coated. Because if you don't have a good tear film, not only do you feel dry eyes, but you also get blurry vision, which is not that great. Side benefit of omega-3s is that then a lot of patients can reduce their need for using artificial tears. So you might not need to switch to the preservative free kind. You could maybe just be good enough on their regular bottles of the artificial tears where you can use them four times a day. All right, then what's next after all of that? So there are two prescription medications for dry eyes. The older one is Restasis and the newer one is Zydra. Those are the brand names for it. I always forget the generic. Okay, so Zydra is called Lifidograst. I, I need that actually. So Lifidograst, Zydra. These come, I'm gonna open them up for you. Hmm, how do they expect patients to, I guess I've never opened it in front of a, oh, there's a little, ha. Ah. <laughs> There was a little notch there that I kept missing. I'm the worst with mustard packets as well, so they, they really are not that hard to open. I'm <laughs> just I'm not that great with doing stuff like this. So they look very similar to the preservative free, and you use them similarly, where you're gonna open up a bottle, a little vial, pop the top off, put a drop in each eye. This is a twice a day medication. The Restasis looks the exact same. There you go, same kind of thing, same. Um, it's a little bit just cloudier. If you wanna take a look there, you can kinda of see it's not quite as clear as the Zydra is. So what's the difference between the two? So Zydra is an LFA1 antagonist, which is a lymphocyte function antigen antagonist. So it works on that particular mechanism of action. So Zydra is an anti-inflammatory and it blocks the coupling of two key parts of the inflammatory cascade and dry eye syndrome. So that's how that works. Restasis has been around a little bit longer. It's also called cyclosporin. And that's basically an immunosuppressive agent. Cyclosporin is also a chemotherapeutic agent. And this is in topical drop form, but in a much, much, much more dilute dosage. So it's not as worrisome, but it is a immunosuppressive. So it suppresses the immune system because dry eye is multifactorial. It's not just because you're not blinking. There's a lot of different factors that cause dry eyes and many of them focus on inflammation of the eyes. So that's then another treatment modality, which is steroids. Steroids could be something like prednisolone acetate, Durazol, or even Lodamax. Those are all steroid drops and they help quench the inflammation that's going on at the front surface of your eyes. A lot of times people will have to use one of these Restasis or Zydra along with the steroid because these drops cause a lot of burning and stinging. And they take a few weeks to take effect. Restasis, usually about six weeks, Zydra, maybe a little bit less. And so a lot of patients will stop using them because they have so much burning and tearing and stinging from them. So that's why ophthalmologists and optometrists will add on a steroid to just help decrease that inflammation and make it a lot more tolerable. But you should know if you are taking one of these medications for chronic dry eyes, you gotta be patient and you gotta give it a chance and just use it diligently. And if you're having trouble, please talk to your eye doctor about it because we wanna know. We wanna be able to help you through that process and we don't want you to just stop, okay? And then there's a couple different kinds of actual treatment. So there's something called IPL. IPL is intense pulsed light and it's a treatment for dry eye syndrome. Basically, the pulses of light liquefy the hardened clogged oil glands that are making the oil for the tears and make everything softer. It also helps with the vascularization and inflammation of the eyelids and reduces the redness of the eyes as well. So there are ophthalmologists that specialize in dry eye. These two treatments I'm talking about, IPL and Lipiflow, are cash pay. They're not covered by insurance and they can run in the thousands of dollars. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they're about one to $2,000 per treatment, which is not for the rest of your life. Like you have to repeat them every couple of months or so. The other type of treatment is called Lipiflow. So what they do first with Lipiflow is they take a Lipiscan, which is a little scan 
of your meibomian glands. Remember those meibomian glands? So here's a little picture of mine. And what they're assessing is what's, how clogged are they? Has there been dropout? Dropout means like have some of them died so that they're not producing the oil for the tear film. What's the status of your meibomian glands? And what is it in relation to your dry eyes? And then they actually do the treatment, which is the lip of flow. So what that does is they have these activators and they send heat through your eyelids, as well as a little gentle massage. So the combination of the heat and the massage liquefies the oil in the glands and makes everything more comfortable, makes you less dry. There are also a lot of medical problems that cause dry eyes. So treatment of the underlying medical problem can benefit the dry eyes, like ocular rosacea. If you have regular rosacea, some people just have it affecting your eyes. Typically treatment with doxycycline or minocycline can really help with your dry eye symptoms. So that's it in a brief little nutshell. If you have questions about dry eye, please drop them below. There are actually dry eye specialists. I mean, there are surveys and quizzes and ways you can tell how, how bad your dry eye is. When you come into my practice, we actually can do a dry eye test and assess the chemistry of your tear film so that we can better treat you. I mean, it's really coming along because it's kind of it seems as if it wouldn't be that big of a deal. If you don't have dry eyes, then you don't really understand. But if you have dry eyes, it can be really debilitating and extremely uncomfortable. Some people can't even wear contact lenses because their eyes are dry. Some patients can't get LASIK because their eyes are so dry. So this is a condition that we really want to be able to treat and treat properly. So if you guys have any questions, please drop them in the comments below and please follow along on my journey, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you are interested in seeing next. Until next time, I am Dr. Rupa Mahalo.